Okay, so you bought DT990 Pros and you're not happy with how the sound is in the headphones. So there are two things you can do. You can go on Ally Express and buy a pair of new pads that can isolate the bass in a whole other way. Also making the echo effect inside of the headphones be reduced to basically zero. This is not something that you're necessarily going to hear. Um, but it's going to make a big difference of how the acoustics in the headphones sound. You, you're just going to have to trust me on this one. This can double the bass response, at least of how it's perceived in your headphones. Okay, so let's talk about the headphones themselves, right? You want to max out these headphones. You want to get as good audio out of them as possible. So where would you start? Well, as I said, these headphones are amazing but there are ways to max them out even more. They're supposed to be made for you uh, to sit in a studio and kind of just make sense of uh, all the small intricate uh, details in the audio. And it's not really a fun way to play games and watch movies and, you know, listen to music. It's, it's um, studio reference, yes, but you can get studio reference quality, but you can ruin their sound profile and add your own. And in this video, we're going to be talking about that sound profile and how we can improve on these uh, so that they actually start to sound like $1,000 headphones instead of $140, uh, which is the pricing in Sweden here. So yeah. So firstly, the first piece of the puzzle here, let's talk about the velour leather or fake leather pads here. Oh my god, these are so comfortable. They're, they're not warm actually. You, you would think that they would get kind of warm. And I think in the summer, yes, they're probably going to get pretty warm. But oh my god, it's worth it, guys. The velour inside of these are so silky smooth. It feels like bunnies are hugging against your head. Like it's, it's amazing. The leather looks great. I'm going to try to get... There we go. You can see it's a uh, fake leather, but it looks and feels great. Um, I don't know about the quality. Uh, from my standing, I would say it's kind of medium. Um, uh, the velour texturing is really, really, really good. Um, but what I mean uh, with the medium uh, quality here is uh, I do believe that these, the, you know, the fake leather here, it might not last that long if you wet it down or you get the... Um, uh, what is it called? If you get it damp in just any sort of way, like sweat or something would come here, uh, you would probably ruin them pretty quickly. I don't know how long these are, are gonna last. I bought them for, uh, I think it was $4 on AliExpress, which is insanely cheap. If you have bought stuff from AliExpress before, you're not gonna be able to get that great first-hand pricing. Uh, but I think these go for $16 at the max. And uh, there are a lot of scams on AliExpress, so I'm going to leave the correct link in the description so that you can get uh, these ones. So basically, you just wrap them on to your headphones, make sure they're wrapped on great. You take the, the inside... Uh, oh my god, this is hard to film with one hand. You take the inside filtering uh, backing of this. It's basically going to be like... Um, this is the default velour pads and you don't have any filter backing here like a um, like a pop filter that goes like this you don't have that on these on these you did get that and it did ruin the sound uh, signature a lot because it's kind of blocking the audio a bit it was really thick i just cut that off like really close to the edging up here on the inside so now it's see-through we can see the original uh uh, what is it called? Pop filter that is baked into the headphones. So it's basically the same thing like this. There's no backing here. After that, you're gonna need a DAC. When we talk about sound cards to PlayStation and PC and all of that, what is the best way to get your audio up and running, right? That's a good question. And honestly, it's kind of either or here. So we have a cheap sound card that can definitely drive the t 990 Pros uh, in a fine, uh, great linear way, and it's gonna sound great with a great uh, with a great EQ. But here is the problem, right? Because you can actually max these out and get way more bass than what is advertised. Because the bass response on these are amazing. So how do you do that? Because you're not gonna be able to do that with this. You're you're just gonna get a little bit higher volume and uh, way better bass and response than original. Okay, so this. It's going to be the guide for if you have the G3 DAC instead of the G6. You're gonna download the Creative app. You're gonna make sure 
that mixer here, speaker volume is on, all of these off, 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 microphone off, turn off all the volume so that you don't get any distortion. Um, uh, 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 uh. You're gonna go into equalizer here, and if you do use those ear pads from AliExpress that I talked about, this is gonna be the EQ. Try to max uh, match this. Sorry, try to match this. Uh, if you're not gonna be using my pads, um, let's see here, which one is it? Is it warmish up? Yeah, this is the one you're gonna be uh, matching if you're not gonna be using my AliExpress ear pads. Yes, so um, this is for the G3 deck, as I said, not the G6. There is a whole other EQ for the G6, and this is going to take your headphones and break them if you don't wield this with, uh, with like comfortable power. Holy shit, this is powerful. I have owned this for like a year now, and I was really disappointed when I bought it. It really didn't work as I wanted it, but it's because I used it in the wrong way. Okay, so we are here in my brother's room. We have taken the G6 DAC and plugged it into his computer. And here we have his dashboard here. We're gonna go into the Sound Blaster command app. And in here, I'm gonna show you all the settings that I have, all right? So um, you're gonna go to uh, playback. Let's see, so I do this correct the first time. I'm just gonna lock the focus and stuff. So there we go. So, speakers, right? You're gonna make sure that this is set to 7.1, done, and then go to headphones. Make sure that that is 7.1 uh, surround there, virtual. Then uh, audio quality, take the one all the way down, 32 bit, 96 kilohertz. This is how fast the audio is transferred, so less latency, the higher number. And this is the quality of the audio. It's important that you max this out to uh, really get this like wow effect. Then you're gonna go over to scout, no sorry, decoder, put it to full. It might be on normal and full at the same time, so make sure that it's on there. On the mixer here, you're gonna turn on uh, monitoring line in and max it out. And then SP diff in, max that out as well and turn it on. Then you can turn off ex external mic and the recording stuff if you're not gonna be using a mic through the DAC. Um, then we're gonna go to SBX profile, which is the most important one. Um, turn these two on, dial them down to zero, then turn them off. Then turn on bass, crystallizer, and surround, put them all to 33. Make sure to do the same on the speakers, so uh, on speakers here, you're gonna do a 33, 33. This is gonna be locked to 50. Uh, everything is gonna be off, so everything is looking well. We're gonna go back to uh, headphones mode here. We can see it's 33 all the way. On the equalizer, which you're also gonna copy over to the uh, speakers mode here, you're gonna go zero, so no preamp, because it already does preamp. Um, so uh, on the 31 hertz, you're gonna go uh, three decibels plus, on 62 hertz, you're gonna go three decibels. On 125, you go 2.1. On 250, you're gonna go um, 6.5. In this case, I'm on 6.4, but it doesn't matter that much. Uh, then we're gonna go flat here on this three, four even. So zero decibels on five, one, two, and four. We're gonna do a zero. On 8K, we're gonna go uh, five decibels. And on 16K, we're gonna go seven decibels, or in this case, I've gone 6.7. You can like match my settings if you want to. It's really not that necessary to do like pinpoint accuracy on that other decimal there. Uh, then you're just gonna go back into here, make sure that it's on um, soft roll off minimum phase. This is not gonna be used, but make sure that it's on that, uh, that setting. Uh, and you're basically done from the software side here. You can go down to settings. Make sure that you update the drivers. Uh, make sure that it's on PC, Mac, and PS4, Nintendo Switch, blah, blah, blah. You can check for updates here. These two have to be updated. It's important, guys. Um, and then you're done on the PC side. Basically, you, basically, what you want to do, you want to make sure that 
the Dolby Audio here, the light in the middle here. You can see there are three tabs here. You have uh, the first one, which is mic input. Then the second one is Dolby Audio, which is a good formatting for fake surround and the bass boosting and overall clarity and audio. I, I do recommend you to use this. Uh, without it, it's not gonna sound that much more crazier than this. Uh, and then we have the headphone audio here on the last tab. So take an optical cable, the one that you got with the DAC, Plug it into optical in and the other one into the TV. You're gonna take the USB port, plug in power, and you're gonna use uh, a phone power brick, plug it into the wall. It's important so that you actually get as much power as possible. Then you're gonna take the headphones and plug them in to the headphone jack on the DAC. Um, if you need a uh, 3.5 millimeter extending cable because you sit in your sofa far away, uh, then get one of those. It works perfectly fine. That's what I do. Um, then you're basically done. Just make sure that the, um, the gain here is on high and make sure that SBX is lit. Um, to make sure that everything else is working fine, the middle here should be lit up and the right here should be lit up. I'll show you when I've plugged it all in. Okay, so there we go. We have plugged it into the TV. And uh, remember, the line in port, not the line out. Line in with the optical cable that you got in the package. Plug it into the TV. Then power cord into one of those uh, power bricks that you can charge your phone with. And then uh, the headphones into the headphone port. Now, you might not get any audio and I'm gonna help you troubleshoot this. You're gonna take your TV remote and you're gonna go into uh, settings here. Navigate to sound, go to uh, advanced, search for uh, audio out, make sure that it's HDMI sound system. It's very important that that is selected because when this is selected, it's going to steal the optical audio from the HDMI on your PS5. And then we're gonna turn off eARC because the PS5 doesn't even have support for it and digital out format to multi-channel bypass instead of multi-channel or stereo uncompressed. Multi-channel bypass is to make sure that it, everything goes correct from when it steals the audio to it through putting it with the optical into the DAC, right? So this should be all. If you still don't have any audio, uh, you basically just go into the settings on your PS5, go to sound, audio output, make sure that it's HDMI device AV amplifier. It might not say AV amplifier, so go down to HDMI device type, change from TV to AV amplifier, go down to number of channels, put 7.1, go all the way down and put the uh, uh, audio format priority to Dolby Audio, not Dolby Atmos or DTS, Dolby Audio. Boom! Now you should have audio. You can now uh, crank up the volume as much as you want and hear the amazing soundstage of these headphones like new again. With these air pads and all of these settings with a G3, you, you're gonna have headphones that sound like well over $1,000 headphones. Like you're gonna be blown away. Nothing is ever going to sound the same. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.